Hi, this is Rachel from the Dotting Center. Do you need a rainbow skull in your life? I think you might. And if you do, this video is for you. Let's make one together, shall we? This is the second skull painting in what is turning out to be a collection. I'll be adding a new skull pattern every year and I'm inviting you to join me. Last year we painted this rose sugar skull together and this year's pattern is for this rainbow skull. This video, like last year's video, corresponds with a transfer pattern available for purchase at the Dotting Center as an instant PDF download. This video will take you step by step to complete this painting at home. It's a beginner slash intermediate level project and if you can dot within the lines, I know you can do this. This is a super fun project and I know you'll have a great time. Also, as a double bonus, I'll be reviewing Arteza's set of 10 iridescent acrylic paints. I'll show you my honest opinion on how they perform specifically for dotting. These paints have unique color shifting qualities and you'll be able to see in the video exactly what they're like and how they look. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get into it. Let's paint this rainbow skull. For this project, you'll need an 8x10 canvas, some transfer paper, the PDF download for the rainbow skull. You can get this at thedottingcenter.com or the Dotting Center on Etsy. As for the paints, you'll need some chalky finish black acrylic paint, rainbow acrylic paint colors. I'm using Arteza's 10 iridescent colors for this project, some gold paint and some high gloss varnish for the finishing. For the tools, we're using nothing but the basics, just a set of dotting rods, stylus tools, and if you'd like tiny dots in your work, I suggest the 8th inch tiny silicone tools. So your first step when working with the pattern is to print out the transfer patterns. So what you need to do is print them out and then cut along the dotted line around each one of these papers. You can just kind of stack them all together and cut them all together and then get an 8 by 10 canvas, a 1 inch brush, and some chalky black paint. The first step, we're going to transfer the skull shape to the canvas using this graphite paper. One side has the graphite, the other side doesn't. And you just want to put the graphite side towards the canvas so that that graphite transfers as you trace your pattern. So you want to make registration lines on each of these four uh, sections on the canvas just so that each pattern will line up correctly. And then you just cut this to size, place it behind the pattern, and then you guys will have tape. I did not have tape, but I had these little weird like sticky doos that didn't, they actually didn't work at all. But um, I have confidence that you crafty ladies will have some tape. So yeah, you just basically want to trace along the edge of the skull shape. And once you take that away, you can see that that is then transferred to your canvas. And now taking that chalky black paint, you're just going to fill in that skull outline with the black paint. Uh, 
All right, so now we're on to step two. We're going to transfer the guidelines using white graphite paper. And you could use your dark graphite paper, but the white shows up better for the camera, and that's why I'm using it. Now there's two sides. One side is shiny, and that's the side that has the graphite. The other side is matte, but it's very hard to tell. So you want to test out that paper before you use it making sure that the graphite is, um, is facing the skull. And then to transfer, you just draw over each one of those lines. You can actually use a compass if you would like, if that's easier for you. There's a little dot. Everywhere there's a little red dot, you can use a compass. But for this video, I'm just going to trace it with my hand. And as you can see, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. You just want to trace over every line that you see. And that is going to end up being the guidelines for your dots. Now, once all the lines have been traced, you can remove the paper and there you go. Here are all the guidelines that you will need to start adding color, which we will do next. Now for this project, as promised, I'm going to do a review of Arteza's 10 iridescent colors. They have a set of 10 different colors and uh, they sent me this box to give my honest review and I'm happy to share with you what I found. Now this is my this is a nerd alert. This is my swatch binder. <laughs> and um, I've swatched out all the paints that I have. And this is how Arteza looks. So it's a transparent acrylic paint. It looks great on both black and white. It has an interesting consistency. Uh, does it work with bottles? Yes, but so it works well with designy type elements. But when you start to get larger dots, the dots tend to uh, shrink and kind of sink in the middle. But a little bit of gel medium fixes that. Now, without pouring medium, you'll see at that top row, that is how it is straight out of the bottle. If you add pouring medium, you can flatten out your dots if that's what you prefer. As you can see, it's kind of a medium body paint. It gives you peaks, but then it settles down a little bit. One amazing thing about this paint is there are no strings. A lot of times metallic paints are very stringy and they end up snapping and giving you little tails as you pull your tool away. These don't do that, but they are they have a very thick consistency, but we'll get into all that later. Let's get started right in the center of the forehead with one big gold dot. And it's very important when you start adding these small red dots, you want to make four dots on the north, south, east, and west of that big dot, and then you just place a dot in between each one of those and then you place a dot in between those so you end up having 16 dots surrounding that gold dot. So now after the fiery red we're going to use shady orange and this time pick up a stylus tool that's just a slight bit larger than the one that you used previously. And with each dot, you just want to place it in between the two previous dots. And pay attention to the guideline. You don't want to go past that. You want to keep this row in between those guidelines. And you can see here this paint is thick. It is very thick and it's going to dry bumpy and raised. So now we're going on to the yellow, which is called Dreamy Lemon Yellow. And we're using the lightest clear tool in my rod set. 
and you just want to do the same thing that you did with the previous row. So place a dot that is in between the space of the two previous orange dots. And now we're going to shift on over to green, shocking lime green. And for this row, you're going to use a tool size that's one size larger than the previous row. Now moving up a size in your tool, we're going to shift to fairy tale blue. Now of all of the colors in this set, the, the blues, there are two blues, and I feel like they're so similar. I wish that they would have had a brighter, more electric blue, but you know, hey, they didn't ask me. So uh, maybe next time, maybe next time they'll add a nice bright electric blue. Oh, but now check out this purple. Look at how beautiful and bright that purple is. It's so, so pretty. It's got little mica flecks of uh, like a, a blue, but it's just really vibrant and really, really nice. So in order to make this heart, you can see you just make two big dots and then you just squish them together. You get a stylus tool and you just kind of fill in that heart shape. And now using that purple, we're just going to use a tool that fits the inside of those guidelines. Now here you'll see that I skipped those top two dots because that space was smaller than my tool. And then you just grab a tool that is that size and fill in those two top dots. This is royal purple. Now this is super, super close to the fairy tale blue. And um, yeah, I just wish that the blue was brighter. I think it would have made the rainbow a lot more successful. Um, but I do like this color because it's almost like a silvery, uh, silvery color. So you want to fill in that outside space, just making sure that you stay within the guidelines. And then we'll go revisit that section later. Now I'm taking um, some gold and painting the inside of the mouth. This is the color that's going to be the background color behind some uh, a nice set of black teeth. So, yeah. So what do you think about my painting? Is it spooky? It's beautiful. Oh, thank beautiful. you. So now taking that gold, we're going to outline the nasal bones and the, the outline of the orbital bones. So you just want to get a brush that can allow you to make a nice line and go right around the eye sockets and the nose. So now let's move on to the fiery red lips. It's very important that we get these two red dots uh, exactly right. So that's why those two dots are outlined. And then you just want to use a tool. Now, when I say use a tool that fits the space provided, dry fit your tool to that space if you're not sure. So basically, before you go into any new section, before you put paint on your tool, just take it and place it right in between those two guidelines and just make sure that it fits. Now here you see I'm using a stylus tool because whenever you have a triangular section where it goes from a large size down to a small size, you just 
take the paint on the stylus tool and use that tool to walk the dots as Kristen Urig says. Just walk the dots from a large size down to a small size. Now this section, uh, I dry fit the tool and then it just looks neater if you can place the dot right in between the previous two dots. Even if there's space in between, I think it just looks really neat and kind of organized if you can keep those dots aligned in this section. So here you can see how thick you can apply this paint just by looking at the end of the tool, you can see how it, um, how the consistency is. It's just very, very thick. One of the things that I love about this paint is not only can you use it as a thick dotting paint like this, but you can use it as a transparent glaze over other colors for like a luminous shimmery effect. Uh, just using a brush as a thin glaze over the over a flat area It's really handy to have so this set of 10 retails at $26.99 The bummer about these is you can't buy individual colors You have to buy the set all together, which is kind of that is kind of a bummer because I don't know about you But I will run out of you know one color all the time if you know if it's my go-to color and I don't like having to buy a whole set every time so now for the top of the lip we're doing the reverse rainbow so we're going from red to orange to yellow to green and just moving our way up now we're into the cheekbone area and you can see this shape swoops into it goes from a really big section down to a very very small section so what you saw there was I was dry fitting. You just take your tool, you fit it into the space, and before you put paint on it, you just make sure it fits, and then you place your dot. And then you do that as long as it's fitting within those guidelines, you're good. And as it gets smaller, see, I just adjusted. I used this, the tool size just smaller than the one that I used previously. And now I'm going to fit even a smaller tool into this section. And then as that section tapers down, I'm gonna to switch to a stylus tool where I can apply the smaller dots all the way up that shape so that it connects up with that heart. Now this next color I completely fell in love with. This one is glowing peach. It's pink with little peach mica flecks. So it actually has like, it's mostly pink, but it shines with like this gold peach color and it is fantastic. This is a really, really cool color. And I can guarantee I'm gonna use the heck out of this color. Look at how it dries, it's just so, it's so nice. So now we're gonna go along the outside edge of these orbital bones with a little bit of the black. And this black is, what's it called? It's fancy black. It has little tiny gold mica flecks in the paint. And we're just going to make kind of um, a dotted edge around the eyes, kind of like lashes. And um, it also, if you have, uh, if you're not confident with your, with your line making skills, this is nice because you can hide the edge using dots. Uh, I do this whenever there's an edge that I'm not really sure looks really great. There's not a nice transition. It's not super um, crisp. You just add this and it's kind of like a textured effect around the edge and it hides any boo-boos. I think it looks pretty cool. Now we're gonna use a stylus tool just to connect the nasal bones up with that heart shape. And we wanna make sure that these dots are aligned really well because if they are off, it's really noticeable because it's right in the center 
of your piece. Now we're moving on to shady orange. And this is another section where you'll have to switch out your tool size. Um, so you're gonna wanna go right around those orbital bones and connect up to the top. So this is this year's skull for me. I have a plan to make a different skull every year. And last year was my rose sugar skull. And I have a pattern for that one as well. They both have the same skull shape outline. Uh, it's a different transfer for pattern all, you know, completely with a different video and it's a different design. But they look really neat next to each other. It's gonna be a progression, a collection. Every year we're gonna make a new one and I'm super psyched about it. I hope you guys are too. So here we are at the top of the skull. We're gonna finish this section now. We're just gonna fill it in with more tapered shapes of rainbow, going from orange to yellow, green, blue, and purple. And we'll finish that section. So you want to make sure that your painting is 100% dry before you do this last step. You really don't want to transfer um, anything when your paint is wet because that would be a horrible, messy disaster. And I don't think I'm overstating that. But right now you want to transfer the crosshairs on the inside of the orbital bones and then down in the mouth area we want to trace each one of these little teeth. Now, I did learn something here and I wanna share it with you. If I had the choice to do this over again, I would use the white transfer paper rather than the graphite, and I'll show you why. That graphite is really, really easy to transfer, and so when you take the paper up, you see how it kinda each one of those raised bumps got a little bit of the graphite on it. And that's just uh, that's a little more mess than I was willing to handle. I mean, it wipes off fine, but if I had the choice, I would have used the white. So now you want to create a big gold dot right in the center. And then we're going to surround that with eight smaller gold dots using the stylus tool and then use a tinier size to fit in between each one of those. Now we're moving on to the teeth and the camera really didn't pick up the outlines of the teeth, but you can, you can clearly see them. I think the background was just so shiny, it didn't, didn't register to the camera. But this section, you just take your stylus tool and fill in each one of those little twofers. Very satisfying. Now we're moving on to the heart right in the center of the forehead. We're gonna use two dots of fiery red and then use a stylus tool to connect the two into a heart shape. So here it is. This is all dry. This is how the first layer of dots should look. Now we're going to go in and add top dots and add some detail, tiny 
fine little dots in between some of these spaces and brighten this up a bit. So usually what I do when I select a color that goes um, on top of a different color, I'll either pick the color that is next in line, whether it's darker or lighter. I just, you know, I want the colors to kind of blend together. So here you'll see I'll use that, that peach color on top of the purple. This also brightens up that row a little bit and it blends with the previous row. So here you'll see this white color. This is playful pink. This is basically like an interference pink. So it's clear with a little bit of pink and blue flecks in it. It's really, really pretty. It dries translucent. So it's not gonna be a shocking bright white. It'll be just kind of like a little bit of an interference luminescent color. Now I'm using the super tiny silicone tool. This is the eighth inch micro dot maker. These are great for super, super small dots and I'm just adding some of that gold wherever space allows in the center and sometimes using two, sometimes using one, whatever fits. For the inside of the heart, I just decided to keep it really simple and just do five little pink dots. So now once my dots are all complete, I'm gonna go in and finish the edge with some golden paint, iridescent bright gold. And we're just gonna do an outline around the edge of the skull. I think this just kind of gives it a nice finished look. And this also helps me practice my fine line skills. This is, this is tough for me, but I wanna add this to my skill basket. You know what I mean? So I think the, the way to do this, the I think it gets a straighter line if you can push the bristles flat down rather than just using the, the tip of the brush. I think that is the secret. So you see, I move the canvas as I go so that I can flatten out those bristles and I think that helps a lot to get a nice straight line. So see how that just kind of finishes it off? It gives it kind of a nice little finished edge. So now we're going to go through and remove all the registration marks on the canvas. So now everything is 100% dry. You can see the texture of the dots. They're nice and bumpy. And now we're gonna go through and take a wet cloth and just remove the guidelines from the transfer paper. Make sure everything is nice and clean and ready for the varnish. So to finish, I'm using my favorite Liquitex high gloss varnish. Just gonna pour some right in the center and kind of move it all around. I wanna preserve the look of these bumpy dots by not covering it with resin or any kind of thick glaze. I wanna actually see the bumps on this skull. I think that looks really neat. Now I have an alternative ending for you. There's a different kind of finish that I did for my previous rainbow skull. Now I will say resin is not for everyone and I, oh boy, do I recommend reading about it first and researching it. It is kind of tricky to, uh, to deal with, but boy, nothing else gives you a thick glossy glaze like resin does. So I thought I'd show you how to do this if you want to attempt it. You want to make sure you don't put too much in the center of the canvas, just enough to cover your skull. And then use a chopstick to guide the resin. It's this gloopy, gloopy thick resin and you just want to guide it along the edge of your skull and make sure that it stays put. You don't want to, if you use a torch or a heat gun, 
to blow out the bubbles. Just make sure you don't heat it too much because it will liquefy and move on you. But that's how you do it. If you liked this video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel because I have more fall decorating ideas to come. And as always, you can visit me over at the Dotting Center for any dotting tools or supplies that you might need. Thanks again for watching. Until next time.